preparing for tomorrow is to help our wounded warriors. Um, you know, uh, this year marks 50 years since the start of the Vietnam War, and um, I don't know if we had, do we have any Vietnam vets in the audience today? Or would you stand up so we can recognize you or any others or family members of Vietnam? Mm -hmm. Anybody see that movie? Did you see me in it? <laughs> You're laughing. I was. I was. I was. You know, you could see me clapping. You know, you could see my face, but my hand. Was but anyway, you know, I didn't have a part like Gregory Peck or anything, obviously. Yeah, but, but we made that movie in, in '76 when I was at West Point, and then we did the we did the uh, premiere at Radio City Music Hall. And as I was making that last turn to go to Radio City Music Hall, there was a small group of protesters. And they were throwing stuff at us. You know, so I went back to my dad, who was Master Sergeant Bostic, and I called him Master Sergeant. And I said, hey, you know, what's that all about? And he said, well, were you in, in uniform? And I said, I was. And this is a movie about war? And you know, it was a movie about MacArthur. He was in war you know, for about 50 years. Um, or he was in the military and serving his country for that long. And, he goes, and my dad said something to me. He said, you know, you know, there's parts of America that don't really like that war, the Vietnam War, and the war's just ending. The best thing for you is not wear your uniform in public. And I said, I watched the porn where I'm like 19 years old, and it kind of just shocked me. Um, and it was about 30 years later when I was the head of recruiting, and I'm flying to an airport, and this lady uh, asked me if she could give me a hug. I said, sure, I'll take a hug. <laughs> and, and then tears came down her eyes, and she said, Thank, thanks for your service. You know, and I looked at my aide, he was about, you know, 30 years old, maybe, young captain. And I said, you know, we're lucky. And, and he goes, well, what do you mean, sir? And, and I said, we're just lucky that we live in a country where Americans love their soldiers, and, 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 and they don't worry about whether the war is right or not, or, or whether they voted for it or not, they, they, they thank soldiers because they're serving. And I said, you haven't seen when it hasn't been that way, but when it's not that way, it's not pretty. So to, to this community and for all you do, um, we, we work on hiring veterans. And, uh, Mark and his team have hired eight. I know folks in businesses here have hired veterans. Uh, um, and one of the, I was in the town hall today, and, and one of the, Guys, I don't know where he works, but he's hired a veteran, and and he asked me, you know, is there anything I, you need to do for veterans uh, to to kind of make sure it's okay for him? And I said, you know, veterans are they're people like everybody else. I think the thing about veterans is they've seen a lot of hard times. So, you know, if there's a long line at at the airport, they, they don't worry about that. They just sit down, and, and you know, if somebody's bothering them, they don't honk their horn and get upset. They maybe, maybe used to do that, but. They just go about their business and they get things done. And you know, one one of the things that struck me the most—I I didn't tell this story today—but uh, you know, I'll close with this. I was at uh, a conference um, speaking, and then after the conference over, I took one of the generals and we went over to a bar and we sat down and we just had a drink and we were talking. And I was looking at the bar, and and I, I saw a guy that was at the bar, and and I, I said. Hey, Dave, there's a guy at the bar. He, he's, a, he's got one arm because he had a prosthetic device on it. And he started moving around, and I, and I said, Gosh, he's, got, he's a double amputee. He, he, didn't, he didn't have any legs. And then he kind of turned completely around, and he didn't have both arms. So, so he had both of his arms were gone. And, and I said, We got to go talk to this guy. So we went up and we started talking to him. He's Coast Guard, and, uh, and it was a Coast Guard kind of accident um, where he lost all his limbs. And, and we started joking, we started talking. I said, you, you really look comfortable up there. You know, you, you, you were moving around so much, I thought you just had one arm that was missing. But I get up here and you, you know, you, you, you're, you've got four. And I said, what do you really miss? Because he was talking about diving. I said, you dive? He goes, yeah. I created these uh, fins that you, these prosthetic devices. You, I, I designed them myself, and he showed me pictures of him diving. <laughs> I'm like, 
I said, well, what do you miss the most? And he said, sir, I'd give anything for a thumb. I said, well, wait a minute, you're missing four limbs, and all you'd want is a thumb? He says, sir, you don't know how hard it is, how hard it is without a thumb. <laughs> and I put, just put my arm around him. I said, you know, you're something else. You're really something else. And he, he, he you know, so veterans don't need much. And I, I don't say everyone is like the, the gentleman I just saw and explained there. But, but uh, I thank the American public for what they're doing to support their service members. I thank them for what they're doing to support our veterans that are coming home. Uh, it means a lot uh, to them and to their families and, and to America. So, so with that, um, I've probably gone long, but I, I, if there are any questions, I can take questions here or take questions in the reception. It looks like we got a question. Okay. Real quick. Um, you were talking about public-private partnerships. I cover a lot of the agriculture, and the farmers would love bigger lots and dams to move more goods through. Uh, as a lot of them talk about, we're in competition with South America. But is this going to take, as you said, public-private partnerships to get some of that, um, maybe working with ABM, Cargill, whatever, to do some more of that, or just repair what we have? Or yeah, I know that it's a combination of, of all. But um, I have said that it's not a question of if we're going to do public-private partnerships, but when. We we have to do this. We have to figure out a way to find alternative means of financing um, the, the projects that we have and the future projects that we might need. Um, th this has been one of my passions and, and we've had a lot of resistance to this because it, it is very different than what we've done. And we, we have to find a way to monetize uh, the work it, it, because business are, they're not gonna give money away. They, they're gonna invest, but they, they need that have a steady stream of something coming back. So, so that's one thing that we have to figure out. We have to figure out the scoring in OMB. Um, and, and we have to figure out how we maintain our federal responsibilities. I, I mean, there's a reason America and our Congress and our presidents have put the core in charge of, of what it does. And, it, 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 you know, we cannot walk away from that. So, so all of that's got to work together. now. I think the good news is Congress put in law, we're going to figure out, you know, they gave us some wiggle room, not enough wiggle room uh, in order to execute, but enough that they are, when I, I testified, we, we had congressmen up there saying, hey, we put this in word it, and, and we expect you to, so, so we're moving out. Uh, we've hired people that wake up every morning thinking about public-private partnership. That's their job. Uh, we have made some headway uh, in OMB where tomorrow, or, or this week, our folks are going back to OMB. When we first started talking about this, there was really some resistance against it, but the OMB director, Sean Donovan, he did public-private partnerships when he was in New York City, and he was trying to get it done when he was in HUD. So when Secretary Darcy and I met with him, we said we, we, we need to do it on our inland waterways, and, and he's up for that. He, he, he doesn't know how we're gonna do it, uh, yeah, but, but we're working together to try to figure it out. So we're going to get this done. Uh, we just got to we got to work it together, and we've got to find a way uh, to, to to give the investors what what they need, and to give the Congress and the American people what I think what they need. But I, I think there's a way forward, and, and we're going to figure it out. In fact, we're, we're working several demonstration projects, and and. We're going in to talk about Fargo-Moorhead, uh, which is one of the demonstration projects this week, to see if we can uh, move that forward. Um, so, so I think what we're going to do is learn as we go. We're going to take one of these out, and we're going to trip over ourselves a little bit, uh, and we're going to wrestle it to the ground, and, and we're going to have to go to Congress, and, and we may need more authority. We may need to go to OMB for some help. Uh, but the good news is, I think every part of the, the government is saying, okay, let's let's go after this and let's figure this out. I've always felt that uh, hard challenges will not be figured out from Washington. Okay, so 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 you you will not find the solution in Washington because we are not necessarily dealing with the problem. 
when, when I was in Iraq uh, and we were getting ready to go over the berm, um, our soldiers were taking metal and welding it to their doors. They were taking, um, we had some, some of the soldiers got killed with stuff that came through the side. So, so they were taking some of the protective gear and they were cutting it and putting it on the side. They were putting it down here on their pelvic area. So, so, because they were at the point of need. That's the same sort of thing. I, I mean, I think the local communities are going to help us figure this out. That you're at the point of need, and 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 the, I, we can get the the laws, and we can work the policies, and and we can try to work regulations and authorities, and get resources. But but trying to put this together, the deal, I mean, it's going to be hard for us from Washington, and not because we don't want to, uh, because we're not, we're not working on the problem, and it's going to take a, 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 a problem that someone can see the solution through and work it together and say, hey, here's a, a way that it can work. What do you think, Congress? What do you think, OMB? What do you think, for? Okay? Okay. Well, I guess the other questions will come uh, in the reception.